All right. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you here. Paul Training. Going to dive into today. Today's, uh, yeah, creative challenge. Daily creative challenge. All right. And welcome, everyone. It's good to have you here. Um, I'm just uh, checking some things. We're going to get this started. It's all about, all about the principles of design. Uh, last week we went through the elements of art and uh, we're going to use those elements to make some fun art today. So it'll be a good time. So thanks so much for joining me. All right, everyone. Let's do this. And uh, uh, a wonderful Tuesday to everyone. Good to have you here. All right. Fantastic. All right, thank you, Wade, for posting that link. So uh, let's dive into this, shall we? Here we are. So welcome. You could always go to behance.net challenge, uh, .net forward slash challenge forward slash illustrator. That's where I am. That's where the files will be, and I'll just double check them just so you know. But you can see, scrolling through all these, we went through line, shape, space, color, and value, form, texture, Created a fun monogram on uh, Friday, which was cool, and we're going to get into abstract art and some design principles today. So get started. This should have the file. Cross our fingers that the asset is there. Oh, this looks like there is nothing there. That's no good. Luckily, I can give this to you now, I think, if you give me one second. Uh, again, if it's not there, I apologize. I apologize, everybody. Let's jump in here because this is the cool file I'm going to give you. I'm going to copy it and let's just drop it right in here really fast. Okay, so again, uh, thank you all for joining me today on this fine Tuesday. We'll give that a second. Um, but let's kind of dive into this uh, because honestly, there's really nothing. There's not a lot in the file, but let's just go ahead and share this. Sorry about this, everyone. Uh, I'd rather be safe and do this now um, than worry about it later. So here we go. Anyone with the link can use this link right here. Waiting for it. Sorry, I'm live streaming at the same time. Let's copy that link and let's paste it. All right, so it's showing up for some of you. Uh, if it isn't, if the internet gods are with me, I'll paste it in chat real fast. All right, cool. Let's get this. It hasn't been working for me. It's very weird that my own files don't show up for me. It's so weird. Ah, come on, people. Okay. All right, so let's move on. Silly, silly file. Here it is, right? Let's open it up. Let's get this started. Thank you so much, Johans, sharing it so I don't have to. Abstract art, right? So these are all the elements of art that we talked about. We're getting into the principles of design, right? So uh, this is what I created for you, which uh, again, which is kind of why I want to give you guys the file. Make sure you have it. But um, basically, um, these are the principles of design. They actually might vary a little bit. Like if you Google principles of design, you might get some variation of... Uh, Balance might be called alignment, for instance, So, but it's the same principles. So we're going to just create some fun abstract, abstract art, and we're going to keep this in mind. And actually kind of, we're going to have fun working, but we're going to keep these principles in mind. And afterward, we're going to kind of reveal them to you. So we're going to make sure our design has balance. Balance doesn't mean symmetrical. It could be asymmetrical. It could be two different things, but it still has balance because they have the same weight. I think of the weight of a design, right? Unity is pretty straightforward. Variety, you get the idea there. Uh, you can create variety not only with shape, but also with color. So keep this in mind. Same thing with unity. You can have something have unity by using the same color and the same shades of one color, right? So just some idea there, ideas there. Emphasis help you um, attract attention. So it grabs attention if something is different than the other things. And this works well with repetition, right? Often designs have movement, right? Especially what we do today, we're going to go kind of crazy. There might be a lot of movement in it, right? And these are just fun terms for kind of explaining our designs. But it creates motion, also leads the eye. Anytime something's going someplace, 
give it some place to go, right? Don't have it just go right off the page, if you will. Give it some breathing room so it has a, you know, room to go, basically. Repetition and proportion used a lot in art, right? If we're gonna have a bike next to a person, make sure they look the same. I think for us, if we're using strokes a lot of times, things don't look right because they're not maybe the same stroke weight. So that's how something we can kind of keep something in proportion that way as well. So that's all. That's all I wanted to share with you. I could turn that off and we can reference it later. Fantastic. Welcome, Aaron, Pam, Johan, Tim, Wade. Bliss is in the house. Awesome. I see you over there, Emma. Hello. Hello, Emma. And uh, Gioti as well. And I don't know why I cannot paste in my link that I copied. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the pencil. So that's where we're gonna start out, okay? All right, over here, we're gonna have fun creating some abstract art by using the pencil. I also mention Kandinsky, right? So this is a fun artist, right? If you just search his name, he does all this crazy stuff that I think is really cool, right? So if you look at this, you can think of all the sort of the randomness initially, but then you see it has some, some repetition with the circle, right? These circles as well. Um, balance. Yeah, it has balance. You have these circles on one side. You have these triangles on the other, right? We have honestly like unity with the color. And then we actually have um, a little bit of emphasis. Uh, yellow often gives you like a lot of emphasis, but since this circle is brighter and it's in the center, this, this has some emphasis if you ask me, right? So again, just fun to make something like this. Look at this, let's make something like this, shall we? This is gonna be so much fun. I'm excited about this. And the fun thing is, I don't know what's gonna happen, but this is the perfect thing to do um, when you're, um, you know, just kind of starting out uh, for the week. Um, which many of you might be. I took Monday off. All right, so let's make sure there's no fill color. We're gonna have a, a, a stroke. Maybe we'll take that stroke down to about four points. And then we can just kind of jump in and kind of scribble around and just have some fun. It's like gonna have some cool art like that. There it is. There's our fun art. Randomness, right? So many cool things we can do with this, right? Yes, Bliss, I hope everybody's doing well today as well. So for this crazy line, we can give this line some a different personality by using all the wonderful brushes I've given you. So in the brushes part of this file, we can open that up and yeah, you can give it sort of a different stroke, like as you can see right here, right? It's really stretching it out a lot. We can try a number of these elements if we want to. Okay, so a lot of times these are pattern brushes. Right here we might have some more art brushes. Let's select one of these. Give it a second. There's our art brush, right? And let's try this one over here. Again, more craziness, right? And we can always go back to our original one right here, which is actually just a five point round is what it's making. But this is what I thought would be cool to do, by the way. Um, change the brushes. But also would be really cool, since Wasley does this, is use the live paint bucket tool. Right over here, live paint bucket, okay? And yeah, it's not part of the agenda, but that's okay. Live paint bucket. Because what I want to do is I want to fill in some of these spots with color, right? And sure enough, here's the paint bucket. If I open up my swatches panel right over here, I can actually start to, I should be able to toggle through and select those different colors. So that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, da, da, da. Okay, you're gonna use your left and right arrows. If you go down, it's gonna jump to a different category entirely. Um, you guys know me, I'm going to go with uh, pink. Hey, why not? Let's throw a pink right in there. It says, hey, you know what, complex visual, blah, 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 blah. 
uh, blah, 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 maybe lost. So some things, if you used a brush or if you did something uh, in, you know, really complex with this, it's gonna say, hey, we're gonna turn this into a basic line. That's what it says. But now I can toggle through these other colors and just have some fun painting these different parts, right? So that's what I wanna do. Go in, grab a blue, you know, and kind of keep my palette maybe limited, but I'm really enjoying these colors, to be honest with you. Purple. Get some yellow in there. I like uh, I like having my swatches panel open because I kind of know where the yellow is as I travel to it. Right? Boom, boom, boom. Key thing here, actually, what I'd like to do is make sure nothing's like too primary of a color. Like this primary blue, I'm not crazy about. All right, everyone, that's what we're doing. We could give them patterns and such as well. And uh, let me know if you have questions. Uh, what keyboard shortcuts? I'm using the left and right arrow keys. But good question. That's not quite the pink. This is the, that's the pink. And what's cool is we should be able to sample that as well. Um, mm -mm -mm. I'll just do this a couple more times because you know what? White is a color, so that's what I'm going to leave some of this uh, white just so you know, and I can change it later on. But you get the idea. Let's, let's go with that dark color. Why not? Dark color. Dark color. Purple. Cool. We did it. Here's our artwork so far. Looks very 70s, if you ask me. Uh, should work with, yeah, it'll work with anything that you put in your swatches panel, okay? Because it's actually able to toggle through, and it was toggling down to some of these colors, but it could toggle right through here. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to layer some of these uh, patterns on top of some of these other colors, right? So what you're gonna get when you use the paint bucket tool, right? We're using the live paint bucket tool. We also have the live paint selection tool. So we could go in there and select, say, this area right here. And that will select it and we can put yellow in there, right? So even after the fact, we can jump in and live paint areas like I'm doing right now. Cool. You get the idea. Okay. Uh, ooh, I did the. Oh, oh. So there it is. Here's my original. Now, oftentimes when you're creating something just fun, chances are you're going to want to kind of like save it. Just like save this version of it. So that's what I want to do is I kind of want to save this version. It's just in layer three. I can click and drag that layer down to the plus button down at the bottom. And now we have our backup. So here's our backup design like so. And then we still have this new one that I'm going to mess with. Okay. Cause things might get a little ugly right in here. Uh, are all those patterns downloaded? Are, are they the defaults in Illustrator? Some of them actually are. So yeah, just go to um, Swatch Libraries, Patterns, and a lot of them are the dots, okay? So just go into Swatch Libraries, Patterns, Basic Graphics, Basic Graphic Dots. That's actually just what I put in here, right? For the most part. Um, sorry, let's go back out. Boom, there it is. But let's go ahead and play with those as well. So again, there they are. Okay, you get the idea. First thing we need to do is we need to expand this because it's like, hey, I'm a, I'm a custom complex object. Let's expand it out. And then if we right click, we can ungroup it, right? So what's happening now is we've kind of separated the line from the artwork. So if I cut that, like this could be part of the artwork that I use. Right? I could even put that on another layer if I want to. So this could be my line, right? There it is. And then we have all of our lovely shapes. So consider just kind of making backups of your layers uh, that you could use and then have some fun with these different objects. And again, you might need to ungroup a couple times. Here's this shape. 
we want to go ahead and apply one of these wonderful patterns. We're going to do that with the appearance panel. We'll go in here. We will actually pull this out to make this even easier. Appearance panel. Let's give this some wonderful dots, which means adding a new fill color, going right in here and picking those new dots like that. Cool. Done. Right? Same thing over here. Selecting some of these, adding dots. We're adding some more lines. And the goal is just for you to get used to, honestly, working in Illustrator and really kind of understanding understand sort of the layering, how this all this layering works. Oh, you can see what I did here. I accidentally changed the stroke. Yes, your stroke can have a pattern to it, right? So right up here, that's not what I wanted to do. Add a fill and then change this to like the lines. Ooh, look at those dots. Look at these. Sort of a, a gradation. Ooh, I'm into that. But what I really wanted to do is I want to go in here. I want to select this fill and I want to give it some lines. Look at this. Look at these big lines. This is so interesting that this is doing that. That's it. There it is. Let's add a new fill. Lines. There we have it. I showed this, I think, on day one. Remember day one? Such a long time ago. Uh, your swatch panel, it does, it does get changed per document. Can I keep them for all documents? Um, no, you can't have a linked swatches panel across all, uh, all documents, but what you can do is you can have your own startup file. So file new, when I go in here, I have an everything customized file. Uh, kind of goes outside of the scope of our lesson today, but you can actually have your own customized file that you always start with that has all your gradients, your strokes, um, your brushes and all that good stuff. So that's what I encourage you to do. All right, so we're back in here. We can see this fill. Oh, interesting. Let's change this. Um, fill, we're gonna change this to say, not overlay, lighten, darken. There we go. Oh, interesting. Ah, so check this out. Um, look at this, by the way. I'm gonna get rid of that. I was like, why, why can't I see the, this was the question I had for myself and I'm so glad I ran into this. Let's change this back to the way it was. I'm like, hey, why isn't it showing the green through these diagonal stripes? It's because these diagonal stripes are black and white. I don't have to go in and edit the pattern. I can, but I don't have to. I could hit opacity and I could change this to darken. So just keep the darks for the white, show the green like so. There you have it. Okay, so that's all that's going on there. By the way, for these wonderful patterns in these swatches in here, put this back, we can always edit them. So if you decide you want to edit this pattern, new pattern number four, just double click on it. And sure enough, we can go in there and we can see, oh, there's those white bars that I might wanna change and get rid of or who knows what. But uh, yes, you can change these. Right, there that is. Also for this pattern. Oh, I hope, hopefully this is fun for you guys. So check this out. I did this also. This, is, this seems so long ago, by the way. There's your scale tool. There's the free transform tool. I think this will do it. Hold down the uh, tilde key. No, it's going to be the scale tool. Use the scale tool. You're probably wondering what, why we even have a scale tool. Because the scale tool has additional options in it. So what I will do is I'll hold, I'll click on the scale tool, I'll hold down the tilde key, the squiggly line, and then we can shrink it down. We can hold on the shift key to constrain it, but we're using the squiggly line and the scale tool at the same time to adjust to that line. So that's what I'm doing there. Uh, add a stroke around a sh Add a stroke around a shape, then do a brush with draw inside. Yes. Stroke goes away. Why? Okay, Carol, that's your question because the stroke, that shape is then being treated as a mask. So that's what's happening. Anytime you do a draw inside, it, it kind of turns that object into a clipping mask and it's no longer really a stroke. So that's why that's happening. 
All right. Just having some fun, folks. We're not taking life too seriously, but again, we're having fun with these, of course. It's getting to be a little much, but hey, Kadinsky's work wasn't for the faint of heart either, right? It was crazy. The nice thing is, remember I kept this line work right here. I could have fun with this line work. Yes, you're gonna have to watch this again and again and just have fun with it. Um, keep in mind this is one solid line, but here's my line. I can change the size of it, right? Have that thick abstract. I don't know, it's kind of looking like Lichtenstein met Walensky. Uh, but let's jump in here and just change the uniformity of this line. Might be kind, kind of fun to make it look a little bit more artistic. And that varies the stroke of it, right? Oh, Varun, you are the best. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, man. I really appreciate it. Again, maybe we don't want to go with that. We want to go with one of these other lines that I showed you guys earlier, right? We could try the bacon line. We can try this pattern line. Wait for it. Actually, it's an art brush. Right, look at that. Look at, that's like almost like a stamp. But it's too much detail and mm, I could tell already illustrators slowing down a little bit. It's a little intense, right? And honestly, it doesn't add anything to the design. Right? So if we think about this, like, we could even go back to our principles, right? So let's go back here. It's like, okay. You know, do we have any unity with the design, right? And I, I think of unity almost in abstract terms as well, right? Joining parts together through shapes, lines, or color, right? So if you're, people make the mistake of maybe marrying a grungy style with something really clean. If you do that on purpose, great. Otherwise, it doesn't look like it has a unified design, right? So we're kind of breaking that unity um, principle, if you ask me, if we go too crazy, which is why I like going with this really clean design like so. So this is currently my favorite. Once you have that done, right, we can turn off that background. Here's our wonderful artwork that we kind of recenter as well, maybe. And maybe rotate it. Right. This is going to be one of those pieces where you like you print it out and then you end up hanging it upside down because you have no idea this uh, abstract art. You're like, what the heck is that? I don't know. I thought you knew. <laughs> Very stained glass vibes. I agree. But it's really fun what you can do with the paint bucket. Once you have that done, you could always select your graphics. And I always encourage people to jump in. We talked about color already, but recolor artwork. If we decide to go that route, we'd move this over and go into advanced options. And these are the color groups that are already in the swatches panel, right? So I can decide, hey, what does this look like if I was a stained glass like Renaissance? I don't know, that's looking very like 60s, kind of 60s vibes, but there's the Renaissance panel, right? I like the brights, it's of course pastels as well, which is really fun. So color does an amazing job, just totally changing the mood entirely. Okay. Um, and you can of course tweak it from there. You guys know I like pink, so I'm probably gonna end up with something like that, it has pink in it. Click okay. Uh, do we wanna change that? No, don't wanna change that pastels group. Uh, but there we have that uh, fun design that nobody in the world has created before exactly like this. There's only one of these in existence. I'm gonna go ahead and make this an NFT and sell it online now. I'm kidding. <laughs> What's up, Bruce sneaking in here? We see you, man, we see ya. What this really needs is a background. I think a background, since this is an abstract shape and I'll have two seconds to do this, um, but a, gra a background or some sort of solid shape in the background will sort of um, ground your piece, which is really helpful. But I think in this case, we'll just try dots and cut it and make sure it's actually in the background, knowing that the white's probably gonna sh throw show through. Mm. Does that do any favors for it? No, I don't think so. Anyways, I will continue to work on this. Make your own abstract artwork. See, there we go, with a circle. 
that probably looks a little bit better and I'll export that out and post it to um, good old Discord. So hopefully that, hopefully that is what you are doing. Um, yes, exactly, Varun. Use uh, recolor artwork and pick colors from an image. There's my fun artwork. Abstract art is what it's about today, right? And just make sure, making sure it's like we're aware of the principles of design because we're going to be dealing with those principles all week long. So there we are. Abstract art. You don't have to like it, but you have to know that this is now an original piece that has never been created for, before ever, which is very exciting. So thank you so much, everybody. You guys are fantastic. I just like hanging out with you, and I'm just so excited for this week. It's going to be awesome. I'm glad you guys are here. And uh, hopefully you really appreciate uh, what I have in store for you this week because it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you, Froja, Umicorn, Natalie, and uh, yes, Fabio and everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, looks like we have um, a Lightroom thing going on. All sorts of things going on today. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I will see you all soon. Appreciate you hanging out with me, and I will look for your artwork on Discord. Thanks so much, everybody. We will see ya. Bye.